Take a journey with me to the brightest of places. This garden called Eden, a perfect creation, where God and humanity dwell in perfect relation. No tears, no pain, no guilt, no shame. Just perfect communion and peace. What a beautiful scene. But into the story, sin explodes destroys our hope and fractures our souls. The story of scripture continues to show humanity running further away from shalom. So now take a journey with me to the darkest of places, the antithesis of Eden, a garden of betrayal and hatred. Step into Gethsemane, look into the scene and see the son of God praying, the son of man pacing back and forth, all alone, so far from his home, this king with no throne, but our only hope, God made low. He is shaking, his flesh aching as the cup begins to be poured. His body is breaking as on his creation, he literally pours tears, blood, and sweat from his pores as our wrath, he absorbs. Now Judas leans in with a kiss on the cheek and the betrayal begins of this prince of peace. The judge of the earth is now being tried by sinful man, his close friends now deny. And there is only one who stands by his side and it's not by his choice, but because of his crimes. The people must choose. Who will they lose? Barabbas, this murderer, this taker of life, or Jesus, this creator, the maker of life? And I cry out in anger, why should Barabbas go free? But the answer resounds in my ear, Barabbas is me. And with a rattling sound, the chains hit the ground, freeing the hands of this wicked man, free to chase again back to his sin, the guilty exchanged for the innocent. And I want to protest and cry out for justice, but my heart is grotesque, so I too would be punished. So instead, I join the crowd yelling aloud, jeering and sneering and cheering as I place the thorns formed into a crown deep in his brow. I spit and mock in the face of God made flesh and the love in his eyes makes me cry louder for his death. His core reeling, skin peeling, blood spilling as he's beaten and torn with the glass riddled cords. His back plowed like a field, the crowd thirsty to kill, the only one who can heal, but his own life, he yields. My own feet now splashing in the puddles of his blood. His body thrashing as the whip swings down from above, the crowd harassing as he sits, silent and dumb like a fumbling sheep to the slaughter he is led, his body crumbling and breaking like pieces of bread, his feet stumbling and taking my place with each step and not one mumble of hate underneath his gasping breath. And still, all the agony of this physical torture is not the reason he wept and begged and pleaded for another way. See, he is literally becoming sin so he can lead it to its grave. The hanging begins, but the irony is they seek to slay Jesus, but instead they slay sin. See, Jesus became what he hates that I might become what he loves. To the point he was forsaken by his father above. Yet we still mock him. Hail, king of the Jews, while he reigns us. We yell, why don't you save yourself? While he saves us. 
We seek to destroy the very one who creates us. And what cripples my soul is he still lovingly forgave us. Suspended between earth and sky. Guilty criminals on either side. One humbly pleads while the other derides. But still with love in his eyes, a king offers a thief paradise. The tears and sweat cease as his last breaths leave his mangled flesh, but into his father's hands, his spirit rest. This gruesome picture of the destruction of sin, unjust suffering at the hands of powerful men, laid in a cold, empty cave to rot away while the powers of darkness dance on his grave but it won't last long because Sunday is coming. The same feet now dancing will take off running. Feel the ground shake as morning breaks on that third day. Stone rolls away up from the grave. Jesus has raised, loose the chains. Death is now slain. Let the whole earth proclaim King Jesus reigns. In his upside down mission of willing submission. He's claiming dominion, puts the disease of sin in endless remission. The king that once really died now really has risen. The resurrection of this Christ means darkness now replaced by light. Let the blind receive their sight. Let the mute sing with might. Now the lowly lifted high, the dead are raised to life. New creation breaking forth, resurrection as the source. Raised with Christ, the veil is torn. So weeping sinners now rejoice. No more endless works of penance. He has done it. It is finished. Every nation and tongue now welcomed into God's presence on the basis of God's son through faith and repentance. All who trust are invited to come and feast. There's room at the table, so come home and eat. Even if you've strayed, wasted your whole life away. Like the prodigal son, you're now filled with shame. You've wandered far outside your father's gates and you're wondering if he still has a place. But what you don't know is that your father waits Every night, squinted eyes, arms open wide, sprints to your side, calls you child, says, come inside, kill the calf, come and dine. You are made right through the blood of Christ, so sit at my table and drink my fine wine. Sinners all are welcome here because perfect love has cast out fear. The same spirit that raised to life the Christ now dwells inside. You are righteous in your father's eyes. So now we join the resurrection song. We shout for joy because our chains are gone. And soon we'll be back in this recreated garden with recreated hearts no longer hardened walking with God in the cool of the day, completely exposed and yet unashamed. No more need to hide and cover up. We'll be clothed in his glory and washed in his blood. Heaven and earth will be our new home and then will we know as we are now known. We'll stand eternal face to face with the one who saved us by his grace. Like the disciples, when their hearts burned inside, as truth was revealed and scales fell from their eyes, we too will see his full glory and recognize that every line, every time pointed to Christ. He is the better Adam because he stayed faithful in the garden. He's the faithful human who brought about pardon. He's the better Noah because he offers eternal deliverance, rescues us out of the storm and gives us repentance. 
the better Moses, the true Sabbath, and the final exodus takes us from slave to son and will forever rest with us. The better Torah, more than laws and countless fresh starts. Instead, he reaches in with his eternal pen and engraves his law of love on our hearts. He's the better Abraham, father of all, the better Israel overcoming the fall, the better judge, the better priest, the better David, the better king, the better temple, the final atonement for sin. God himself became flesh and dwelt among men. The better Hosea, who married the unfaithful adulteress. Christ transforms us into a pure bride, faithful and righteous. The better prophet, because he doesn't just warn of death, he rips out our unrepentant heart of stone and gives a heart of flesh. All of the scriptures testify to this sacrificial king in Jesus, the face of God revealed for the world to see. From glory to glory, this is my story. The whole of my aim is to make his name famous. I rest in, I hope in, I trust in this risen king. His life was taken, was forsaken, that I might never have to be.